So, uh, 10 years go by, I'm kind of, I gotta be honest, fell into some demonic isolation. Uh -huh. Just rejection, hurt, whatever you want to call it, church hurt, just a bunch of nonsense. Fell, didn't lose my faith, but I definitely was doing my own thing. Mm. Living with a girlfriend, college, etc., mm. etc., et you know the story. And then, uh, so what happens was I moved down to Texas, 2015, well. and, uh, Found, like, started getting connected here, but hadn't really had much success, you know, just for one reason or another, couldn't connect with people. Right. And, uh... You like your people in general, or like Upper Room Dallas, or churches, or... Name it. Name it? Name okay, it. okay. That rejection was a serious problem. Yeah, no, I hear yeah. So... Same with me growing up. So for years, I would just hang around and be the introverted, wouldn't talk. Like, if I didn't feel safe, I didn't talk to you. Right. And I was definitely, a uh, contemptuous attitude that was a bratty child but mm. um fast forward to 20 what 20 2019 something like that um my mom gets in with a deliverance crowd and just demons, yeah yeah like gets into a deliverance crowd and just gets free like she gives me the testimonies and i like i said i never lost my faith i still thought i loved the lord mm -hmm. so as soon as i heard that there was freedom I was like, sign me up. Come on. Come sign on, bro. Up. That's it. Like, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was off. I knew that there was something that needed to be corrected, but I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. So it, I heard there was a solution, so I went for it. So we went to this uh, deliverance retreat. This pastor, this minister, he, he does evangelism mm. just with deliverance. So he's done that for like 20 years mm -hmm. and just, just throws this retreat every year in this camp and just does a weekend of deliverance, teaching mm. on it, etc. I got set free a bunch of stuff. Not everything, but a lot of stuff. Yes. Enough to realize that, okay, I need to move out, break up with my girlfriends, and really go after this. So from there, the Lord's just like, I don't know, it was like he hit the go button. Mm. Um, I mm. spend a month in recovery. Whoa. I spend a month where... You're right. Like, the kind of nights where it's the kind of nights where um, you fall asleep. I fall asleep. I fell asleep listening to uh, "Make Me a House of Prayer." Oh, it's just a, that song was just popping off last week at yep. with Pastor uh, Donnie and Ginger yes. Pro. Life Point. They were playing that like over and over again last week at yep. the small church plant we're oh. friends partnered with. That's wow, exactly it. in Waco. Yeah, fell asleep to that. Go ahead, keep going. Fell asleep, passed out, no, like. Okay on the floor, face down on the floor, drooling, passed out, would wake up long enough to pray in the tongue for five minutes and then would pass back out. What? Yeah, this happened for like a night. Whoa. So that was that was recovery. And then after May, a buddy of mine that I met Man, in I'm Pennsylvania, That's all. he, uh, yeah. we were chatting, you know, we were buddies, we decided to keep in touch. That's so awesome. he tells me about evangelists, an evangelist that's coming to his church, small church in Pittsburgh. So I'm like, man, huh. it's pretty good. I want to see this. Like, I, I want to see this. So yeah. I buy a ticket that night. Wow. Go see him. Go spend the weekend there. Get rebaptized. Huh. Finally see myself as the bride of Christ. Oh. Ooh, come on. Yeah. Like, I'm just, waiting on that with me, too, on the way down. Yeah. That's, First time I got baptism and, like, felt it. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. And missed my flight back. So the Lord How said, I, I feel like the Lord said, it might have been something, but um, there was very much a faith move where I had a backpack of clothes and I lived in Pittsburgh for eight months. The church that I went to had a men's home nearby that they what? took in men. You told Joshua Carvalho, this was like the faith journey, the backpacking. Like all of us, dude, I missed my flight home. This is awesome. Pittsburgh yeah, no, that, that, that missing flight home is purpose. That's why as soon as you said that, because we've had many... Uh, you know, quote unquote, James missed flights. Yeah, like, yeah. Yahweh is like, uh huh. Oh yeah. 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 Didn't have the like, the lady. The only record note or uh, record or uh, notification I got was them calling me 20 minutes before the flight left. It's like, hey, you're on your flight, right? I'm like, no. I read that date three times. Wow. It said it. I thought it was next week. She's like, nope, we're yeah, leaving now. Like, well, crap. 
So I live at this place for eight months, plug into the church, get a bunch of stuff exposed that I didn't know I had and needed to deal with, some some discipleship. Yeah. And uh, all the while, learning about deliverance, learning about healing, learning about, like, I, the first time I saw healing that I laid hands on, yeah. that was during that time. Yeah, amen. Like, all of the miracles that I had heard about for ten years, but never saw, mm. I got to see. Mm. Like, it was the first time that I was confident that I was praying in tongues. That I actually knew I was praying in tongues. It was the first time I encountered the love of the Lord. Like, it was just like eight months of boot camp. Well, the things that I haven't dealt with caught up to me, and we left the church in a bit of, I left the church in a bit of offense, and like all that nonsense, so I moved down, back down to Dallas, hmm. and then the Lord starts me on an inner healing journey. For the next year, I'm doing nothing but inner healing. Like, I'm learning it, I'm facilitating it, I'm doing it myself. Wow. There's exposure, all of these things. Awesome. And it culminates... In a mission trip that we go to, just a prayer mission trip to El Paso. Uh, yeah. No, Brownsville. Yeah, it was it was uh, Brownsville. Brownsville. It culminates there, where I just get slapped in the face. Like the word that was spoken over wow. was that I was uh, one of Eli's sons. Whoa. And like a brat in the temple. Hmm. And it just sparked. It was the first time I encountered a spirit of repentance. Whoa. Like, just my pride got crushed. And from there, from there, it was the point where the breaking down finally happened. Like, I finally realized, like, nothing changed. Things got dealt with, but nothing really changed. But it was that it was a setup for what was to come. Hmm. Where I was at Thanksgiving... I was at in Pittsburgh, a uh, mentor of mine, she's been with me through my entire journey. Mm. She, um, we had Thanksgiving at her house, and we were doing a prophetic, we were at a prophetic conference, Charlie Champ and uh, a couple people like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing a prophetic conference in Pittsburgh, and I'm sitting there, and it's a powerful encounter going on. Everyone in the room is getting hit, and I'm sitting there feeling nothing. Mm. And since I've already seen the power of the Lord and encountered it myself, I'm like, something is not right. Yeah. Something about this is not right. right. So I go to them after the conference and everyone's happens. done. When everyone's getting hit and you're just like, what's going on? Like, yeah, you're just nothing There's something up in your heart. <laughs> yep. So I go to them after dinner and right. we're at home yeah. and I'm like, guys, can I get deliverance? Right. And we go after some things. Sharamate, Rebe. Go after some things that we had in front of before, and something different. Yeah, might there not, was some stuff that I saw that. that uh, yeah, as I'm saying, might not always be just you, but yeah. But uh, oh, man, get that brother down. Broke some things off. It up. From then on, it was I finally saw that I had the mind of Christ. Amen. That's like, right. Like it was actual sonship. Yes. It was actual. Sons something of... just clicked to yeah. where I realized that I can't do this. Whoa. Rafa. And then, what, six months later, um, or three months later, I'm moving into the... We can't, but he can through us. Exactly. Wow. You're moving into six months, moving into here? Oh, yeah, it was like three months. And wow. then, just in count, just the Lord, I, I end up connecting with people. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I've got more friends than I can, I've ever had in my life. My job is actually turning around to where my boss is like yelling at me every second. Uh, uh. Right, um, amen. Everything changes. Experiencing everything that changes. freedom. Yeah, and waking. I'm, yeah. I'm walking in authority that I've never seen before. And it's... Prophesying. Yeah. Yeah, prophesying. Like, the it's prophetic. It's over me the night for deep Really? Really? Wow. Yeah, the Lord's got some... Brother Young. Amen. Bro. Just amen. encounter after Lord. encounter. Come on. And it's... Come on. Brother but that's only... Preparing it up. The half. Get ready for marriage. the relationship comes up, too. Yes, sir. So, amen. that's the testimony. You're caught up. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. It's awesome. Oh, did I only get one thing of sauce? Yahweh. Yahweh. Well, that's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing. That's that. awesome. what you did for me. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. Look at sure. Brother Jan, man. Look at Brother Jan on that. We got Dominican and Suzuka with onions from Dominican Republic. Look at that, preparing for ha! marriage, man. Preparing to be a husband. Preparing, exactly. <laughs> Women that chef cooking for the wife, man. Preparing for the matrimonial. Hallelujah. Yeah. Making awesome. family sized dishes. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yep. Way, way, way. Come on. It's beautiful. That should be. Yeah.